Hey, Joe Gilder here. If you have questions and you'd like to see me answer them in a future video, leave those questions on my videos. So I look at the last month or so of videos and see if they have any questions have bubbled to the surface. If they make sense, I make a video. It's nice. Here is a question from, I don't know, Nadokus in Edokus. Ned Okus, I think is this person's name. Uh, quick question. Is it possible to select a range on an event and then press a key command to have that event cropped to the range you selected? It's the opposite of delete range, more like delete everything but the range. Thank you. I did not know the answer to this question. I thought there should be a way, and guess what? I found one, uh, and it's really fun to show you, and it gives me the, uh, the goosebumps. So let's jump over to Studio One and check it out. So real quickly, just so we're all on the same page, let me just get rid of everything but this bass track just to have something to look at. Less visual distraction. Okay, so we're looking at this bass track here. And what, we'll call him Ned for now. What Ned is asking is, let's say we recorded something and we really just want it to be a four-bar loop. So we select that four bars that we like. And what we want to do essentially is we want to cut it here. Let's say we want to cut it. Well, we select the four bars. We could double-click in this top section, that separates the event. Then we could click here and delete, click here and delete. This is the end result that Ned's wanting, but obviously we'd like to be able to do that faster, especially with certain types of workflow. You may find yourself doing that separate, click, delete, click, delete a bunch. So why not, if, if it's possible, why not make that faster? And you can, by the way, if there's something you hope Studio One does, I would say, Three quarters of the time, it probably does it, or you can make it do that with something called macros. I'll talk about that in a second. So the first thing I did, because I didn't know the answer to this, is I tried to just see if I just select it and right click, does it give me an option to do what he's asking? And the answer is no, it doesn't really look like it. Then I double clicked to turn this, oops, to turn this into its own event. Then I right clicked on that event because there's more options for the event itself. And I started to see crop to content, which I clicked and nothing happened. I don't know. I think that's if there's complete silence on either end, it'll crop out the silence. I think I'm not entirely sure because that never did anything for me. And I am ignorant as to what that does, but that's not the point of this video. Okay. So then I started looking in all the things we can do for events and look, thinking of words like trim or crop thinking about those. So there's this trim start to cursor and trim end to cursor. These, this is where this whole adventure started. So you can see those are mapped to control left arrow and control right arrow. I actually mapped those because I was trying to figure this out. How do you map things to specific keyboard shortcuts? Come up to the menu, go to keyboard shortcuts, which I have mapped to option K because a keyboard shortcut for your keyboard shortcuts is about as nerdy as it gets. But if you pull that up and you search for the term trim, it tells you that there is a trim end to cursor and trim start to cursor. All right, so that you may think, okay, what does that mean? Cursor in Studio One means the playhead. So this thing right here, wherever it's going to play from, that is the cursor. So if I do this command right now, what's going to happen? Hmm, interesting. So it took the selected event and it trimmed the beginning of that event to the cursor. And then if I select here, it trims the end of the event to that cursor. Interesting, but still not what I wanted. And that got me thinking, well, I could create a macro that says, turn this into its own separate event, then move the cursor to the beginning, and then trim to that, then move the cursor to the end and trim to that. But I couldn't find a way to move the cursor to the beginning of the range. Because again, if we come over here, the keyboard shortcuts area is a good way to search for any commands that might exist. Most of them are here, if not all of them. So if I say cursor, we've got fade in to cursor. We've got create a range, but I don't have range start to cursor. That might be what I was looking for. But... While I was searching, I accidentally stumbled across the answer. And that's the beauty of, you may look at this and say, Studio One's too complicated. No, it's not complicated, it's just deep. You want it to be deep because you want it to be able to handle whatever problem you throw at it. And because it's a mature piece of software, we've, we've taken, like there have been so many times before I became affiliated with Personas, I was just using Studio One. And I would email the developers and say, man, it'd be great if Studio One did this. I remember one was 
had to do with sending tracks to buses, um, create bus for selected tracks. And they said, that's a good idea. And in the next update, they changed it. So it could be the, all those little changes over the years from listening to our customers ends up meaning we have a bunch of commands in here that are super helpful for certain workflows. So as I was searching, I looked for the word crop because I was thinking sometimes it's called crop. And I saw there's this crop to content that we already saw. And then I saw this. This is the magic thing right here. This is under the macro section. It's called crop selection. So I went ahead and mapped that to control C. That works on the Mac. On the PC, you'd have to pick something different because that's copied. But on the Mac, copy is command C. So I used control C was available, so I used it. But what is that? How do we find out more about what crop selection is? Since it's a macro, we can come to our macro organizer and look at the recipe used to create that macro. So if we come up here to the menu and we go to, there it is, macro organizer, this cute little robot fella um, that looks a little bit like a famous robot from a certain movie. Um, if we come here and we search for that same, not macro, if we search for the word crop, we will see crop selection is a macro. We can double click on it to see kind of the recipe for the macro. So on the left hand side are all possible commands that you can assign to a macro. On the right hand side is what's actually assigned. So all a macro is, is it's a command that allows you to trigger a sequence of commands. So if you do a certain set of commands over and over, and they all are available over here in the command list, you could have Studio One do that for you and create your own. Someone did this at some point. I don't know who because there's no description here, but thank you, someone, because this took existing commands in Studio One, did them in a certain order to achieve the result of cropping everything but what we have selected. And at first, it looks kind of odd. So it's copy. The first command it issues is copy, so it's copying the selection. Then it says it's using a command called select events in range, which means whatever range we have selected, this kind of gray box is our range. It's saying whatever that range is touching, select those events. So that would look like going from this to this. It's now selected those events. That's the difference. So here's the range. Let's go back and look at this again. So it copies the range first. Keep that in mind. It selects the event that the overall event that the range is touching. Then it deletes that event. So we're deleting the whole thing. Then it pastes the thing that we've copied, and it uses a command called paste at original position. So since there's code under there that says where this audio originally existed, it doesn't matter where our cursor is, because right now the cursor is kind of right in the middle. Um, if I were to do this manually, check this out. If I were to say copy, select, delete, and then paste, it would paste from wherever the cursor is, wherever the playhead is. That doesn't work because now it's not lined up with where it was supposed to be. Let's undo all of that. Instead, I can use this command, which let's go back there real quickly and finish up the analysis of the little recipe. It's very simple. Uh, crop. And it says it deletes it and then it pastes. Okay, that was the last one. Paste at original position. So I, like I said, I've got this mapped to com, uh, control C, which we can see there. If we scroll over, by the way, uh, with a recent update, some update, we added the ability to see the keyboard shortcuts and to adjust them here instead of having to go over to the other window. So I can see that this is mapped to control C. So let's just see if it works. I'm going to select these four bars here and I'm going to hit Control C. <gasps> I love being surprised. So what did it do? It did exactly what we just said. It selected that entire event. It copied it first, selected the entire event, deleted it, and then repasted what we had copied where it was to begin with, essentially doing exactly what, was it Ned? Ned was asking. Now, the one variable here is if you've got multiple events, let's undo that. You can see how this bass track is made up of several different events where I've done edits or we did punch-ins and things like that. It's not going to get rid of those. Um, so, But my guess is the, the, the use case for this is you just recorded something. Maybe you played Shaker for like 64 bars and you're trying to find a good like eight bars of Shaker. And then, so it's going to be, it's not going to be this all edited up into little chunks. It's going to be just one chunk of audio like this. And then you go find those four or eight bars that you like. You hit this new key command you made, and you're off to the races. And now I can duplicate that out. Now I've got my loop. Uh, by the way, D does that duplicate thing there. Love this question. Um, I love that I assumed there was an answer, but I decided to, but I didn't know what it was. 
And of course, Studio One delivers yet again. So if you're cur- if you're nerdy and you like to make your own commands, there's a lot of cool things you can do with macros. For example, um, on this, let's find a track. On this bass track, if I wanted to add an EQ, I've got a macro. It's just control one for me, and it adds EQ to the channel and pulls up the EQ. That's pretty cool. I showed you how to do that in another video, but macros can be really handy. You don't have to get super nerdy and create a hundred of them, but a handful, you know, two, three, four macros that make your life easier, depending on how you like to work, that can be a game changer. And it's just fun. Makes you feel a little bit like a hacker. All right, that's it for this video. If you liked it, let us know. Leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe. And if you have questions of your own, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching. See ya.